yeah, yeah, yeah start. Start. yes okay so hi everyone am i audible clear right yeah yeah okay so we, we have uh, already done the iot workshop with a firewall monitoring system and uh, i think uh, this to our new also yeah i guess did you have attended the previous workshop md uh, nazir alam and salini Shalini and uh, no sir. Okay. So I will recap then uh, that what we have gone through. I'll share the PPT. Uh, I think uh, you you all guys uh, got the PPT right or not? anyone please reply so that i can share the ppt so please share the ppt okay Salini, sign lingual team, and Nazira, I'm getting switch on a camera, please, if possible. So that the interaction could be proper because we are yeah. just three members here. Or just turn on the audio. That is also good, no issue. Actually, sir, I'm outside, so I can't open my video. Okay. No issues. No issues. Audio is. Yeah. So my screen is visible. They are visible, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So. We have gone through uh, the basics of IoT, then data acquisition with IoT, then uh, getting to know into the basic ESP devices and embedded programming, and then the data acquisition with Firebase. So you guys are from which background? So that I I could explain you properly. So like you are from CSC, BTEC, uh, like BTEC or any uh, schooling or anything, so that it is uh, easy to me. Uh, so I'm from the BTEC background, from EC branch, uh, pursuing mm -hmm. specialization of VLSI okay. technology and VLSI. Okay, and Signy uh, Lingual, am I right? Okay, no issue. Uh, so you have used Arduino before or not? Like any kind of Arduino devices? No, sir. Okay. So you are new into it. Okay, no issue. So uh, IoT means basically uh, connected internet connected things that should be used for any communication protocol or any kind of information sharing. Okay. So uh, you are using basically IoT devices in your day-to-day -day life that uh, should be your smartphone, your laptop, your Alexa devices, and also uh, in your household devices like refrigerator, washing machine, uh, air conditioner. They are also the IoT devices, right? 
because they are uh, that devices we can control from our smartphone like we can get the data we can control from smartphone they are also iot enabled so iot means we have we can control them through a lan or local area network and also we can control your satellites then we are coming into the data acquisition so what is the meaning of data acquisition so data acquisition means that we are using some kind of sensors that collecting data from uh, a device like some kind of your air conditioner refrigerator something like which kind of data like uh, you can say uh, some kind of temperature some kind of uh, uh, value some kind of uh, um, like uh, reactions some kind of um, like moisture pressure and anything okay uh, you can say also voltage current voltage fluctuations there also so you are getting that data and getting that into a microcontroller and that is called data acquisition dac so there are basically uh, five four to five types of dac like the process that is uh, in a physical system that is analog digital then sensor motor control relay control then going to transducer transducer means converting that raw signal into a proper computer readed signal then signal conditioning that is the process to manipulate that analog signal to make it easier and compatible like uh, in case of uh, analog signals all the times we are not getting the proper signal like uh, we are some kind of we are some time we are getting zeros some kind of we are getting false values so it will filtering that value okay then adc adc means it is a normal you can say normal electrical component uh, analog to digital converter sorry electronics component analog to digital converter that means converting that analog signals to all the analog signals to a digital readable signal in the computer or mcu Listen. I can't uh, view all. Just uh, tell me yes or no. Sure. Please respond, guys. Did you got it? Like what is the IoT and all the things? So in between your audible was bad, so I didn't get. Okay, okay. So if you respond once, then I'll uh, like try to getting louder. No issue. Okay. So. Yes. Uh, which one? This one, right? Or this one? This one, sir. This one. Okay. So data acquisition means the the short form is DAC, D A Q. That means we will use some kind of sensors on a machine, like pre-built machine. Okay. Like. Uh, if you are using air conditioner okay in that we are what we are getting the uh, temperature the moisture and also the levels like uh, your uh, degree okay so that value we can getting into your mobile phone you are, we you can control the value from your mobile phone also you are reading the that value from the mobile phone right uh, if in case of uh, your washing machine so you can set the modes you can set the water level you can set the uh, weight of your uh, clothes uh, that can you can set from your uh, smartphone and also timing okay so this is called data acquisition means getting the signal from a pre built machine loaded into a mcu and converting into a iot signal got it is it okay 
Yes, sir. Okay. Then this is the data acquisition system. Okay, that means the physical component, like uh, the sensors that uh, uh, physical things that used for the data collection. Okay, that means the analog sensor, digital sensor, counters, then motors, then relay. Okay, they are used for the data collection. Then transducer and signal conditioning used for the data filtering. ADC used for the analog to digital conversion. That means col uh, collecting a raw data and converting into the digital binary data that can uh, used as the MCU signals. Okay, that means computer understandable language. Then computer or MCU microcontroller unit. So that is used for like your logging, your uh, verification, your signal sending, and the processing. Got it? Data equation. Is it okay? Yes, sir. Okay. If you don't understand, then just tell me. I'll uh, make it understandable. Then we are starting into your ESP8266. That means the node MCU. So in uh, normal MC, normal MCU, we are using Arduino's, but uh, for Wi-Fi based thing, we can also use uh, ESP01 with Arduino. But the uh, simplest one is ESP8266 or Node MCU. That is the cheapest one and simplest one. That is used for like your uh, logging, your verification, your stories, your IoT uh, clocking, everything. Okay, this is the simplest and cheapest one. But the problem is, it is a like a, it is a 16 or 8 bit processor, and ESP32 is the higher end. That is a 32 bit processor, like a controller, not a processor. It is a controller. So ESP32 is very popular, but ESP8266 is very cheapest. So every students can use this one for a hobby grade purpose. Got it? And also I have given a link here. Okay, that uh, you can install the Arduino uh, Node MCU ID or Arduino ID with the Node MCU in your laptop, and you can do also the program. Is it okay? Anyone, please respond. Okay, sir. Okay. Okay, so starting with the LED blinking code, I have also uh, shown that one, and also I am showing again that one. Uh, my uh, video is visible, right? To everyone? Yes, sir. Okay, this is a Node MCU board. Wait, I'll remove the blur. Yeah. So this is a Node MCU board. Okay, that I have given the picture. So this is basically embedded board used for hacking also. Uh, like you can uh, do also Wi-Fi hacking through it. Uh, and uh, don't do, do that in your house. Uh, so I will uh, show you a test program. So this is basically, a, uh, you can see my screen, right? Arduino ID. Yes or no? Yes, sir. Is it visible to you? Yes. Okay. okay. So this is the basic Arduino ID that yes, uh, after the after your installation you can get it get this display. Okay. This is a void setup, and this is a void loop. So setup means basically you can put all the code like the declaration and uh, the uh, all the all the declaration you can put here only. Okay, like suppose in a uh, MCU you have some kind of pins, like some digital pins, some analog pins. So you can declare there, declare here like a digital write, uh, sorry, pin out or pin mode. Pin out means that you have setting the pin for output or input. Like you are setting the pin for the LED blinking or your sensor input. If the sensor is getting some data, then your MCU is a setting for input, like taking the data. And if you set the uh, pin for high or output, that is set for 
uh, used for led motor or any kind of relay understand anyone guys please respond shalini sign lingual shivansh aryan no one is for Shalini, are we audible? Sign lingual. Please respond, guys. Aryan. It won't be able to uh, proceed forward if it won't reply. They are not responding. Launch. Are we audible to them or not? Yes, yes. You are audible to me. No issue. Charlene, you are not audible to us. Please rejoin. Uh, Sivans, uh, you can type here. I guess we can move okay, forward. Can, yeah. Okay. So here are uh, some kind of examples for the Arduino and uh, any kind of Arduino ID related uh, MCUs that uh, you can use freely and you, you don't have to write this. Okay. So this is a basic LED blinking example that I have given in the PPT. This one. Okay. So what it is for, like all the MCU have some kind of built-in LEDs. Okay. So we have we can see that how the LEDs are working, like how the basic LEDs are working. Okay. So here I told that in the pin uh, void setup that we have to write the pin mode. What is the pin mode here? that the pin number that is LED built-in, that means the built-in pin is LED2. 
So directly we can write two here, no issue. Also, all are to the same because these are variables. Okay, two, two set to output. That means the pin number two is set for output. And in the while loop, we are writing a code that will continuously loop, continuously in the loop. So what I wrote here that this will write two comma high, that means LED glow, then delay thousand, thousand means thousand millisecond, that means one second, then digital write two comma low, that means off, then delay thousand, off for one second and on for one second. That will continuously in a loop. Okay, so I am uploading the port to COM4 that is connected and uploading. So it will take some time uh, because the compiler will compile the code and then it will upload. So it is writing currently with, to the MCU. You can see some blinks, that means it is writing. Anyone have any issue, just tell me. So I will rectify that. So you can see here, right? Uh, Besa, I'll just pin my uh, video so that they can see. I guess, but they have to pin themselves or them. Okay. So just see my video is that it is working right now. Okay, it's clear. Okay. So it's blinking, right? You know, a one second delay. One second for on and one second for off. Okay. So then we are moving to the next slide. That is the DHT 11 sensor. So I have a sensor here that is called DHT11. Then that is, this is for temperature and humidity reading. Okay, that is non-contact sensor. Means uh, don't need to contact with the surface. So I have some jumpers. I will connect the jumpers to the sensor so that we can connect this one. Yes, and if I connect it properly, then the light should be glow here. Okay, it is connected. So then we will go to the DHT11 program. Uh, Bisal, just uh, uh, like look the chart so that because I am not. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I am managing the chart. The chart. Don't worry. Yeah. Okay, so this is a example code. I'll make it understandable so that no issue for you guys. So here it is defined as pin two, but I am using it in a D3 pin, means digital three pin. And also I am using DST 11. So I'm commenting the DST 22 and using DST 11. Okay, and uh, this is no need. Okay. These are the basic codes like uh, we have used uh, serial print for uh, seeing the value in the serial monitor, beginning the library, DST pin and DST type, then DST dot begin, that means the library will begin. Then in the loop, we are fetching the humidity, temperature, and uh, here we are getting some humidity, temperature, and heat index. Okay, I am uploading it. Taking some time to compile, then uploading.
okay see what you can do with it you can use this kind of sensor in a industry like uh, in a factory you can use this kind of sensor if something will burn some machine will burn then you will get some kind of notification in your phone that the machine is hot okay so this is called pureite iot okay so here is the common com port and i have selected 9600 so i have set the border to 9600 and yes we are getting the temperature and humidity i don't have a lighter so i am putting my dhc sensor in my laptop body so that i will get some kind of heat i think so yeah increasing see 34 30 34.6 temperature decrease increasing and humidity decreasing got it everyone yes sir okay so that means the temperature sensor is working so now we will move forward to our fire wasting okay because important is the data acquisition how to save the data in a real time monitoring system or a server okay this is the circuit diagram so in the ppt it is also mentioned that how can you use then go to the firebase so firebase is a like it's a free server you can say free cloud based server that you can use for your hobby grade project or you can say your professional projects okay and this is a real time cloud based server like aws uh, your uh, like uh, other servers okay this is also server but you can modify it and you can uh, use for the data logging okay so all the steps are given here but i will show you that what you have to do in a real time creating a project supposed to be each day okay then continue then continue then select a account everyone have a default account okay so create a project it will take some time so uh, you can use firebase for if you have saw some video in youtube that uh, you can control your home light fan anything from your smartphone that is the this is the thing you can use okay this is a cloud based server that uh, you can make your own application in mit app inventor and fetching the data in your firebase and giving the data to your mc you know lan and you can control from anywhere like uh, from usa you can control your india indian home anything like anything you can do it through it okay it's created so first of all we have to go to the all products then go to authentication that we have to authenticate our server get started everyone uh, listen it properly because uh, in the ppt also all the things are there but uh, you can't go through all the things okay if you have email id password you can use it if you have a phone number you can use it but i am going with through the anonymous so save and it's authenticated then going to again the all products then the real time database that we are using okay real time database then create a database so it's a very easy case okay like uh, it's not uh, like some kind of uh, 
db db dbs system the database management system okay it's not kind of like mysql system it's a normal one okay then log mode enable everything is there like this one okay i've given all the things so you can see it like how to do all the things okay go to rules then set the rules to true and then yes true and then publish just this no issue this is important this url yes url you are using and this is a database server here we will see all the database thing go to overview project setting then this is the project name id project number api key go to service account okay go to database secrets so every database has a secret api key through the pipeline you can only fetch the data so this is the api key Okay, we are using this. I've copied. Going to a testing project. Testing the API key. Then the important thing is URL. That is in the database. Copy the URL. Delete the slash. We don't need. Okay. I have the Wi Fi SSID password. I have de uh, defined two libraries here Firebase ESP8266 and ESP8266 Wi Fi. And then define LED1 and some database, uh, like library database authentications, like Firebase database for Firebase data, then authentication configs, then uh, begin with a uh, serial mode. Wi-Fi begin because we are using Wi-Fi right now to communicate and to control. Okay, so this is a normal code. You all are using this one for every Firebase project, and this is for Firebase dot begin. This is for reconnect Wi-Fi. Means if the Firebase is getting some data, then reconnect Wi-Fi continuously. That means looping. Okay, and then we are into integer data. Like uh, if I fetch an integer. From the firebase, then uh, we are written that if the data should be one, then the LED will glow. So you can see here I have written low, but uh, the MC in the MCU that is a inverted sign, okay, inverted pin. So if I write a low, then it will be glow. That means high. If I write high, then that is doing low. Did you understand what I am telling? Guys, please reply to chat if possible. Guys, yeah, this thing. Okay. So this is for the inverted pin, and what I have uh, written here that if I am getting a value that is one, then it will be glowing. Else, any value that will be off. Okay, so I'm uploading it. So it will take some take some time because it's a big code and also it included libraries. So 
so i have removed the sensor and i am only using the board because it does uh, inbuilt led so you can see the magic right now that what is happening here okay it's uploaded it's, uh, we are going to come come port setting the border yes yeah i have turned my turn on my hotspot i think so it will connect right now yeah connected so now it will show the path not exist so i am making a path in the firebase okay this is our database path is we have written here right we have written a path that is test then integer so first value is test then int then supposed to be five value add okay that means test integer and five okay now it is showing five five that means it is fetching the data but what we have written so see here uh, the light is off right so if i am changing this or i'll show you side by side if i am changing this to one it will turn on see if i am changing it to zero it will turn off got it is it cool like you can control your any kind of appliances from your mobile from your server anything okay got it sivan saryan okay then we are going into the temperature how to read the temperature okay i am connecting that sensor again to the t3 pin yes connection done and i am uploading the code so also i have given the screenshot of the code so that it is easy for you and also i am using the same database that i have created now so going to this copied this is the same code but only added that uh, your dst values okay i have uh, shown you the dst how the dst sample code is working so i have added only the dst sample code no extra things so going to the project overview then service accounts then database secrets copy and paste okay all are the same d3 pin dst uh, type 11 and url wifi begin and all the things fetching the value to the server firebase server okay uploading so it will take some time because it has consist a library 
So it is reading the library, then coming to the port. Okay. Till now, anyone has any question? Sivans, Ayan. No question. Okay, Aryan. There is a network issue, like some what is getting the audio. Signing only team, you can also respond, please. Name sign lingual. So I will, uh, I will share the PPT to you. Also, okay, let's have that PPT. Uh, so I will edit the extra code that uh, LED code in it, uh, you can share that. Okay. So that yeah. they, they can use uh, after that. I guess it's the time to pitch if they're ready to do so. Right? Yes. She wants. They Aryan. can also do here. Yeah, if you can put forward your ideas or put forward your work now as it is a pitch session, yes. so you can do so. If they have some good ideas and I can make the code also, they can understand the code. Yeah. Okay, so uploading. Uploaded. Going to the serial monitor and connecting. So you can't participate, he's saying he's in the internship. Hello, sir. Some? Yeah. She wants to participate because he's in the internship office, so he won't be able to okay. present. Okay, okay. Uh, okay. Aryan, Aryan, sign lingual, Aryan. any of you? This was the last PPT, right? The last slide of PPT, Swami? Yeah, yes. I have also said this uh, in the uh, like workshop day. So I'm just recapping that one. So you will edit and correct or correct it and send it to Akhilesh and me? Yes. I will he just will adding to... the one slide only. Yeah, okay, then send it to Akhilesh and me. I will uh, we'll look into it. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I guess they are not responding now. They are busy somewhere. But there is yeah. some network issue. No issue. Uh, is, the is, session is recorded. So is there I anything more can... present? No, Is no, there no, anything that's more it. people then? That's it. That's it, yeah. So I guess we should then end the session or we should wait for them to present. Mm, don't know. Shivanj, we like, won't be able to participate and Aryan and Sign Lingual is I think it's their network not is, responding. Uh, their network dispensary. Okay, then I'm yeah. sharing the feedback form, guys. Uh Please uh, take a note of it and fill it. Uh, it's visible. Uh, one second. Yeah, it's visible.
guys please scan and fill the feedback form and acknowledge in the chat Arjun has done the feedback form. Okay. Okay, then uh, thank you, Swam. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your time. Everyone. I will share the PPT so that you can share them. Yeah, sure. Yeah. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Kilesh. Thank you, Aryan. Thank you, Swami. Thank you, Sanjay Gulding. And uh, thank you. The recording will be available soon in the Siena portal. You can look over the recordings if you.